yo no me puedo ver. Eh, estás, estás saliendo, Bien, Rosa. Gracias. Tranqui. Ok. Tengo Bien. yo el venido de eso. Perfect. Uh, we are here with Ivan Sanchez and we are uh, looking forward for a live coding exciting session. Uh, Ivan is uh, really amazing. I cannot, I, I cannot find words to describe him <laughs> because he has a, such a vast experience in GPS, outdoor, indoor, nautical charts, and uh, yeah, a lot of JavaScript, unhealthy, insane JavaScript. <laughs> So I'm really happy to welcome you and to welcome all, all our audience. So Ivan will delight us for one hour. We will have a short break in between. And then um, for sure, uh, questions are welcome in English and in Spanish, of course. So I will yep. be here and without any more delay, please go ahead, Ivan. Yes. Uh, oh, I will need my uh, screen on the stream, by the way. But yeah. Uh, Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is kind of a small experiment uh, I was doing in the format of the talk. Um, I have been given uh, a few leaflet workshops in the past in, in previous strategies, but the format of a workshop, I don't think that it uh, fits an online experience because it tends to need more interactivity between the workshop attendees and the workshop teacher. So this is a live coding session. This is just me doing an entertainment stream. That, that's my goal here today, to do a bit of entertainment and to see me coding. But uh, I will need my, Rosa, I will need my code on the screen. One of the, uh, one of the things I do uh, regarding maps and leaflet is weird, crazy web standards that nobody Things about because I like to. Uh, I have to delve deep, or I'm used to delve deep within uh, web standards to make things work in in JavaScript applications. So I go and read new standards and documentation and need to pick on the details because that's kind of the the deciding factors when you're trying to catch a bag and the bag only reproduces in Internet Explorer 10 in a tactile in a touch screen. So it's like what kind of the, what tiny piece of all the JavaScript API is failing there. So I want to show you first to start this off. I am going to show you something that I did a few months ago for a W3C uh, workshop, which is, I'm kind of ashamed of this because this is also one of the, uh, in my opinion, this shows to everybody that web browsers are monsters today. A web browser 10, 20 years ago used to do web pages and that's all you do. But now web browsers can do game controllers. And um, this uh, leaflet plugin that I did a few uh, months ago, it just, you press the thing and it moves. And you press the thing and it moves. So that's it, really. That, that's all it does. It's cool, it's nice, and one of these was being the Zoom. I don't know which one I had it configured to. Uh, they have it. these ones? Yes, these ones. I configured this one to have the, the uh, shoulder button and the trigger in uh, other ones. So I'm going to just move around a bit. Um, I'm going to read the code for this because it's fine to do it. By the way, if anybody does, uh, in, if anybody has any questions during the uh, live coding session, I have the uh, uh, the venueless platform on my separate laptop screen. So please feel free to ask questions as long as they are technically in nature and I have to implement them and or they involve crazy web standards. Please feel free to do that. So the whole basis of the um, joystick demo is this API here, which is the gamepad, gamepad API. By the way, uh, something that I want to make clear to everybody doing any kind of web development is that the Mozilla Development Center is absolutely wonderful and it's the only resource you should need to do any kind of HTML and JavaScript development. Uh, this has all the all the information for the uh, for the HTML document standard. So it's like if you go and search with audio, you know, you just will see the whole thing. And 
that thing that this is web audio. I'm going I'm just jumping ahead of time. I want I don't want web audio, I mean I want uh, gamepad. So this is what I was uh, this is the uh, the documentation I checked for making the leaflet gamepad uh, example work. That's it. Uh, just remember, please, if you need any kind of information, developer Mozilla has all the APIs and you really don't need anything else. And it's going to be up to date and it's going to give you information of which browsers support which features, which is when you're doing any kind of compatibility work, you need to be aware of this because it's something that works in one browser does not work in another browser and this is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's one is the main resource I use these days. I used to use a different resource, uh, which is kind of used with that a few months ago, years ago, I don't remember anymore. But just please, if you if you have any kind of technical questions to yourself about how does this very specific web component, web uh, browser thing work in a web page, that this is the the main thing. This is not React. This is just plain HTML and plain uh, plain vanilla. JavaScript. Going to the uh, leaflet gamepad, uh, the core of the thing. This is a. Uh, this is based on one of the tutorials, the uh, the third extension tutorial on the leaflet website. Has a very basic example of how to extend a handler, a map handler, which attaches this it to itself to a map and can enable disable itself, and then based on browser events will do things. And the main thing is um, focusing and blurring the map. This is when uh, when the map has focus, uh, because any element on a web page on a web page can have the focus on itself. So, if you have several leaflet maps, for example, you have to click on the appropriate one to make this work. If not, you would be capturing all uh, gamepad events regardless of the focus. It's the same concept as when you're typing anything in a text field, which text field are you writing in? That's the focus. So whenever the focus, the, whenever the map is focused, uh, you start, uh, you run this and you start pulling and then you call the first thing. And on every frame, which is every 15 milliseconds, I run this code, which is, hey, get me all the game pads and get me, um, this, is, uh, this is a bit, weird to people who have worked with this before uh, gamepads because this is listening for all gamepads so if I, I actually have two of them or several of them they all will uh, affect the same uh, map so this is just basic i'm going to loop through all gamepads and then if uh, i want to zoom in i set the zoom in and if i want to zoom out i set the zoom out and then i just accumulate how the uh, movement how much movement is in the first uh, in the first axis, in the uh, in the uh, in the joystick axis that I'm looking for for the x movement and the y movement. Uh, this is also because a joystick can have any number of axes. I think I have seen some with six or even eight. So in this case, you have like uh, one axis horizontal and a second axis vertical and a third and a fourth, and then you can set the hat to be two more axes uh, with some configurations and so on and so on. You can have a lot of stuff. It's not really a joystick would you have just the yaw and the pitch, and then some joysticks start to make the roll, which is a three, jo uh, a three axis joystick. Now a uh, modern game console gamepad works as a four axis controller's minimal. So every 15 milliseconds, I check the state of the buttons. I accumulate the movement of all gamepads in the first, in the axis I'm looking for. And I calculate how much time has them, has them been pressed. If the user is pressing both buttons, I do nothing. And if the user is pressing only one of these buttons, I zoom in or out. And then I queue the next poll operation in 15 milliseconds. And that's it. That's all you need to make a joystick thing work with leaflet. Um, I just like it. It's just, uh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, I configure this to be able to do it with one hand for the examples. This is button six and seven. But it's nice and it's kind of useless, I think. But it works. Okay, so if nobody has any questions about joysticks, I'm going to go ahead and try to make something else, which is the original idea I had. Uh, for that, I'm going to use one of the debug examples in the leaflet repo, which is this one. Um, my secondary goal, or one of my minor goals with this live coding session is to inform all of you how events work. Uh, in my experience and in my opinion, uh, people coming from the GIS field are not very versed in the more technical aspects of programming, such as, you know, concurrency, and uh, memory management. So when it comes to handling events, people have certain tendency to get lost. Huh. So I can, uh, so turns out that, nice. I didn't know that uh, there's also software that handles gamepads to navigate their own maps. That's nice. Anyway, um, uh, one of my goals is to teach, try and teach you a tiny little bit how events work in Leaflet because people get or uh, tend to get a tiny bit lost. Especially since you learn, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ramiro, do you think I know what I'm doing? Come on. In, in some of my talks, I use the meme of the dog in front of the keyboard because I don't know what I'm doing anyway. That's, that's you know, that's all of our lives. Anyway, um, normally in a programming language, <laughs> God, my, uh, normally in a programming language, um, in a uh, imperative programming language, things just run from top to bottom uh, in a sequential order. The weird thing is that when you have events, uh, event-driven programming, there's code that runs only when an event happens. Um, and Leaflet handles some of these events because they are ultimately triggered by the map. Um, so for example, if I move the map uh, with my keyboard, this is going to trigger a set of events with different timings. If I zoom the map in and out, this is going to trigger some events and that's what's making that happen. I can, you know, to see this better, I think I will just switch to a console because it's nicer to see. So I can do something like map on, uh, you know what, I'm going to declare a function because this is the way I think that it's going to be, uh, people are going to get more value out of this. So it's easier to get a good understanding on how event-driven programming works if you see a declare function instead of a lambda function, which is um, anonymous, an anonymous lambda function. So I'm going to make a function uh, print map center, which is going to take one parameter, which is an, an event, which I'm not really going to care about. And then I'm going to do a console log uh, map get center. And that's it. Uh, I don't know how my, how's the JavaScript level here, but in any case, uh, if you just run console log, something, it prints that something in the console. And I have access to the map, to the leaflet map, because it's a global variable in this example. There are some times when which you will not be able to do this, especially if you use uh, more complicated frameworks, you will not have the map defined as a global variable, or you might, be, you might have a hard time getting the console to work or cleaning stuff up. That's why I just, I'm going to work only in uh, binary JavaScript. Okay. With that said, I have a function. And I can call this function. Uh, I don't want this. I want this. I want to clean the console. I want to clean the console. And if I run this function, I get the map center in the console. So let's try and 
do an event handler with this uh, map on move the map center. So what I'm doing this is I'm telling the map that whenever there is a move event, you should run this function. There's a, there's a lot of confusion in uh, JavaScript movies when it comes to defining these functions because usually you just see everything in the same line. You don't see, um, you usually don't get to see how a function is defined with a name and a proper explicit verbose definition. You usually see something more like, uh, you can see these kind of things. Uh, whatever. Right. This is okay, and it will fit, uh, it will work. But you lose the you start to lose focus of what you're doing. And I'm a person who needs to know what I'm doing, or I need to try and know, try and be sure of what I'm doing, you know, to get into programming. So I prefer things with names. I prefer things explicitly. I prefer to make comments and everything. Uh, okay, I did attach the uh, the function to the map event. So if I move the map, I get one. I get that that function runs once every time the map moves. Uh, is, you know, every time Liv decides that it's a good moment to fire that event, uh, it does. That's the whole thing. Now, since I have that function uh, explicitly defined, I can also remove the event handler. And now it doesn't work anymore. This is important because if you are doing something like this, uh, something like uh, an, an anonymous lambda function, which is the same thing. Uh, uh, get center is this way. Uh, okay, yay! What's the first? Yes, this. If I attach it with on, right, it starts working. And if I detach it, if I try, if I try to attach a anonymous lambda function, you will see that this. Is still firing the lambda function. Um, anybody has any idea why this happens? This is yeah. I, I just love torturing the audience a tiny little bit. I need to wait a bit because there's a delay in the stream. Nobody knows why detaching a lambda function doesn't work. Okay, I will tell you. Uh, the event is still associated to it. No, that's not the reason. The reason is whenever you're doing this, uh, even if the code is exactly the same, right, because this is exactly the same. Yes, Surush is correct. Was, yes, you are all correct. Anytime you write a Lambda function definition, you are creating a new function. So yay, you just won yourself this. That is absolutely right. So you have to think uh, of this as uh, instead of... A way to think about this is like... Uh, what? You do something like this, and then you, whenever you write it, it's like this. Uh, so it's like anytime you you define it, it's a new. Uh, so now it should be clear that I'm touching a different thing. If I if I do this thing here, this should be uh, explaining a bit better what's happening here. Okay. Ah, nice. Um, yeah, also I want to make a, um, a note here that the map has event handlers, but there's also other parts of the map that have event handlers. 
One of them is the tile layer. I don't know if the, yes, it's a positron. Oh, and uh, I don't know if there's people from Carto here, but the positron thing was used to be publicly um, advertised and now it's no no longer publicly advertised and that's pity because I love Positron. So this uh, is a tile layer. If you look at the source code here, I have the map which is an instance of map and I have Positron which is an instance of tile layer. So if you check the reference here, which is nice, um, the map has some events. These are all events that apply to the map, including, you know, the move event, which is what the one I'm I'm using here. And if you look at tile layer, tile layer has events on the tile layer, which are inherited from other. Not really, there is no move event. So if you try to do something like um, if you do something like map on the pillar tile error. Uh, whatever, this will not do anything. And conversely, if you do something like Positron on move, this will not do anything because this is not the events that that event target fires. I just don't think, uh, what I'm trying to say is don't think that only the map has events. All kinds of things has events on the um, uh, on leaflet, uh, markers, tile layers, uh, vector layers, the renderers, um, a few other things that I remember right now. So anything in documentation that has an event section, you can do event handling. And anything that has events also has the um, evented methods, which are the on and off and, and so on and so on. Now for the fun, because I have been talking nonstop for 25 minutes and I have not been doing the thing that I was supposed to do on the first at the first thought. So what I want to do, and this is going to be completely obnoxious, and it's going to create a lot of um, audio feedback if I do this wrong or I am slow in muting the stream, is I'm going to put sound on the map. <clears throat> uh, this idea comes actually from a uh, SpongeBob SquarePants episode, which is the one in which SpongeBob gets this whistle that you can move up and down and is going all around town, just making all people angry by making that sound. So my goal, and I have not rehearsed this, folks, is I'm, I'm doing this live. I'm going to try and make sound depending on the zoom level during a zoom animation. Uh, but yes, audio maps. This is not the kind of audio maps. This is obnoxious audio maps. So you go to MDN or go to, this is a, a snapshot of the, of the MDN website. And I did look this in advance. So I'm going to make an oscillator note, which is that this creates a, completely synthetic uh, wave or square wave or triangle wave, sine wave sound form and place it. Uh, and it's just, I'm going to just copy paste this thing here, okay? Now, something important, if you're going to copy paste this code in your own browser, you know, with F12, be aware that this oscillator has a stop method. This is important. If you cannot, if you start hearing a high pitch noise and you want to stop it, you have to stop this oscillator note. Don't just copy paste this and just leave it. No, that will just create a lot of sound and you will hit me for it. So I'm going to not copy paste the start. So I want to be a bit careful about this. So I'm going to go here and paste this thing. Yes. So I have an oscillator here. If I do, I don't know if this is going to actually work with the um, with the streaming. I, do, I don't know if the audio capture will capture the output of my browser. So you can, I, I'm going to just do this and hope for the best. Wish me luck. Um, also, please note that I'm going to call stop shortly thereafter in order to try and minimize 
the damage to your collective ears. Oh, uh, yeah, Sylvain is asking if we should lower the volume in your headphones. It's a good idea. <laughs> I'm just going to say that it's a good idea. Okay, <clears throat> I don't think that was too bad. And I did hope, I do hope that that, uh, that worked. Also, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to uh, turn off the sound for my Firefox so I can, uh, yes, I cannot call it more than once. I knew this would happen. Why don't I ever, uh, I want to create the second one. I don't ever learn. An oscillator can only be. Obviously, I can uh, just say yes. Yes, the stream did pick it up. Perfect. And hopefully, I, it wasn't too bad for you folks. Okay, so you have the second oscillator too. Uh, my volume is down. Yes. So I do have. The sound. Oh my god, I hate this thing already. And the thing is that I can also change the pitch if I remember correctly. Uh, frequency, value. Oh, damn it. Uh, this is not working. Why are you not working? Hmm. <laughs> Um, okay, this is bad for me. Uh, I need to remember how to do this because I want to change the pitch. You know what? I can I can create a new oscillator at every step. It's fine either way. It's going to be fine. Okay, so what I want to do here in this example, uh, this is an example that uh, attaches a lot of events to the map. So you can actually debug what's going on when you do a, a, a zoom animation. So if I do a fly to to the kittens in New Island, because you all know that there's kittens in New Island, right? There's going to be zoom and move events at every 15 milliseconds, at every, at every frame uh, for the normal use case of 30 FPS browsers. And then if I do DC, um, it just triggers the zoom, and I can see the the zoom uh, level number here. Uh, I will go later. Yes. So the thing I want to do here is I want to start the sound whenever the zoom start event triggers. I I want to recreate the frequency of the pitch at every change in the zoom level, and I want to stop the sound at zoom end. So let's hope this works. Uh, so I need to do map on, I hope this is like big enough for you to read. So on zoom start, I want to, I, I, I will need a couple of flags and things to work with. I want to let uh, oscillator, just create it, and I want to let, uh, should I be playing sound, which is going to be false right now. Um, I don't really care about efficiency right here, so I can just attach the event and check for the flag. So I want to make a function event. Yes, yes, I like the explicit function definition instead of the you know arrow function things i hate arrow functions they are syntactic sugar that don't give me anything i don't like them so don't ask for them because i will just tell you to go off the stream or whatever um frequency value val but that's exactly what i had i did have exactly the frequency value like that's exactly the thing i had so is it with like quotes? No, because the frequency value is a number and that's a, and it's a number. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't care. I'm, I'm just going, yeah. 
we will fix this later if we can. Um, Ivan, I was thinking if you would like to make a short pause. Oh, uh, yes, uh, it's like half an hour. So I want to refill my cup of coffee and drink it very fast. And, you know, it's half an hour. So if you want to switch to a different session, just doing that. Um, I will be back in like two minutes and I will start putting this in two minutes. Okay, so for the people that are joining from different session, I do hope you know how to handle leaflet events because we are going straight into creating an obnoxious sound effect when zooming into the map. So I have my placeholder for the, for the oscillator node. I have my flag to stop and start this thing. And zoom start, I'm just going to set the flag on zoom end. I'm just going to set the flag to false. And then all the magic is going to happen on zoom. Uh, on zoom. I want to make a function. So the first thing to do is since I'm going to reuse the oscillator, which, okay, yes, I'm going to, yes, let's start to do this. Uh, and then obviously, No code should be complete without to do some fix me all around. So yes, I'm going to do this. Uh, the here instead. But since I had problems doing the frequency change and I'm going to completely ignore everybody in chat telling me how to do this, I'm going to do it the, the crappy way, which is creating a new oscillator node at every 15 millisecond interval. Now, since this is going to run at every at the start of every uh, interval, the first thing I should do is uh, stop an oscillator if there's one. Uh, and it's always safe to stop the oscillator, I think. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then I'm going to create a new one by copy pasting the code again, because I am, I forget how the hell you should do this. Uh, oh, by the way, the audio context I can reuse. So I can put it on the global scope, right? Yes. Okay. And then at every Zoom event, I create the oscillator node. I do this thing. And okay. It hurts. I don't have any clue of what the frequency should be. So, uh, and I don't want to make this a cons because it's defined already in the global as a mutable thing. I have no clue what this value should be. So I'm just going to go with, uh, let's try like 2000 divided by the zoom level and see if this has any discernible effect. Uh, I did save the thing and I'm going to reload the page. Yay, and I have a syntax error in line 137 uh, because I didn't close something. Because I didn't close this parenthesis, right? No, wait. I did close it here. So this should be good now. Okay, <sighs> fingers crossed. Yeah, and I'm an idiot. Yes, I'm an idiot, complete, absolute idiot. Let's do it again. I'm still an idiot. Yeah. <clears throat> um, obviously, once soon I have to stop the oscillator node. 
And then if I calculate my frequency, I should use that frequency instead of doing a constant here. I feel like a complete idiot. Okay, uh, let's get ready for one more chance at this thing. Uh, Yes! Woo -hoo! <laughs> it works. It actually works. I'm I love this thing work as I expected without too much travel. I'm so happy right now. Okay, and obviously this works the other way too. Um Do you know the best part of all this? I didn't tell you this before, but if you actually go to uh, this web page that I'm writing on chat fervorously, um, if my router is configured correctly, you should be able to play. Yes, you should be able to play this in your web browser. <laughs> And that's actually my laptop. So as I am changing the code, that web page will update uh, real time if my internet connection doesn't fall uh, apart. Which I hope it doesn't. OK, this is fun. It worked. Uh, now I'm going to try and make changes so I reuse the oscillator node instead, which should be fun. Uh, should I try on? Yes, I'm going to make a copy of this. Uh, I'm going to make a copy of this and make it like two. So I'm going to work in two from now on. And I, we still have the uh, the working one if if I really mess things up. Okay. And then I should be creating the oscillator here instead. I can't remove the two to fix me. I am back fixing already. Woohoo. And I should stop it. Yes, I need to create one every time because I cannot restart it once it has stopped or else I get an error. Because <laughs> headphone warning won't read it locally. Yes. <laughs> yes, please do check the volume of your web browser. If you, if you can, um, if you have per application volume, do check that your volume, um, the volume of your browser is you know low enough to not cause ear damage. Okay, I am starting the oscillator here, and I have to start it here. Okay, which is fine. And you know what? I'm going to. Do I have an oscillator node here? Uh, no, because I am re. I am stopping it. I want to create a new one. The variable names are exactly the same. Uh, yes, freak is undefined. Uh, uh, I want 200. Uh, okay, so I have a low tone here. And then dot um, frequency dot value. So doing this thing should change it. It doesn't change it. And it doesn't change it. Why doesn't it change it? Do I have to restart it? How the hell do I update this value? I need to I need to stop this thing again or else my headphones are not going to yes. I need to double check the uh, oscillator sample that Joe copy pasted in the chat before. And I'm going to check this live because that's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing today. So uh, play the tune head and. I have the oscillator. I am 
Starting this. What am I missing? Can I visualize start displaying? I'm not seeing it. Uh, you connect the thing, you stop it. Frequency value puts file. Hmm. Uh, why is this not working for me? Is it because I have it attached to the output already? Hmm. The context current time. Set value at time? Wait, frequency has a set value? Is this as simple as doing frequency? Set value time. Obviously, you don't make an assignment, you make a set value call. Uh, duh. Uh, so then I need to recalculate this thing. I need to do this at the soon start as well. And then, uh, no, I calculate now already. Freak audio constant. Yes. Okay. So this should work. Hopefully. So um, I'm going to just. If, any, if anybody feels as uh, adventurous as I feel, feel free to go to this second web page, which should be the continuous, the the one which is very using the uh, oscillator mode. And it's not sounding. Uh, something is completely wrong, and this is making no sound. Why is this making no sound? Um, students are. Oh, because I'm stopping it at the same time. Next soon. I'm an idiot. That's why. I am a complete idiot. Yes, it works. Remember to control the volume in your headphones if you do this at home, please. Okay, so I want to try uh, to set different values to this. Oh, I have 10 minutes only. Okay, it's fine. Um, something that the, I wanted to show also in this live coding session was the problem with zooming. This works with the fly trues and works beautifully. <laughs> or, well, beautiful is a bold choice of words for this. It works. But whenever I do a, a normal zoom, like a, a scroll wheel zoom or with the buttons, I get a constant tone and that's, um, yes. It's making a constant tone and it's not really doing the same thing. This is important too. This is something that I wanted to explain. If you look at the zoom events, uh, whenever I'm doing a fly to animation, or uh, if I had a touch screen or a phone or a tablet, wherever I could do the pinch zoom and uh, the same effect should happen. Uh, the, doing a pinch zoom also triggers one zoom event at every frame. But if I'm doing the uh, scroll wheel, it's just a constant tone because there's no zoom event being fired in, the, in, that, uh, in that case. Um, that's because Leaflet uses a very weird way of doing zoom whenever you do the normal thing. Uh, I'm going to try and, yes, the reason I, I was doing this in this directory was to show the actual code for the zoom handler. So if I go here and here and then here, uh, Whenever you zoom in, uh, it triggers a set zoom, and this is a set view. And at some point, this is in the animation handler. Damn it, I forgot where the animation is being handled. Uh, OK, a different approach. I need to find 200 milliseconds in two different parts of the code. Uh, no, I don't want this thing. I want in the actual project, not in that. 
Okay, where are you? This is a long-standing bag in leaflet. We have no current way of um, no way of controlling the duration of a. Oh yes, immediate size. Uh, no, this is not it. We have no way of controlling the duration of a zoom animation, which is a, only in the CSS. Which should be in this. Uh, no, wait. There's 250 milliseconds. Uh, wait. Some unfair animations. So the animation is 0 0.2 seconds. Oh my god, yes. Uh, Leaflet pop up animation. Yes. This thing is 250. So I can just blow this to two seconds and this should be clear now. So please note that I'm modifying CSS. I'm not modifying code. I'm not modifying code here. I'm just not JavaScript code. I'm modifying CSS. So if my tool chain is correctly set up, which I really hope it is, uh, no, it's not. I'm not running this thing. So I have to again run and watch. So I, I'm rebuilding leaflets. So I'm rebuilding the. I don't need to rebuild because I'm changing CSS. I'm an idiot again. But if I do the Yes, now it's way more visible the effect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, I need to find 250 milliseconds somewhere else in the code. Uh, where are you? Here. Yes. On zoom transition end. Yes, this is the this is the crazy piece of code. So if I do two to fifty. Yes. That's the thing. Um, now I'm doing, and now this is very visible, the effect. I'm just making a, a zoom animation with the same tone, and there's no zoom events. If you look closely at the events being fired, you will see that there's no zoom events being fired whatsoever during a zoom animation. There's a zoom start, there's the zoom end, but there's nothing in between. Because the zoom animation is done by a CSS, it's not done by a JavaScript. So there's no way to control when it happens, which sucks uh, for some applications, especially this one, because I would like also the thing to move up and down with the time. So for that, uh, I also cannot inspect the map uh, real time. If I inspect the map, uh, the zoom does not change accordingly. Uh, it just doesn't. I, I could do a set timeout or something trouble, and the value would not change whatsoever. So there's two ways to approach this, and this is a, a frequently asked question sometimes. Uh, how can I get the zoom value in the middle of a zoom animation? A, a, a scroll wheel zoom animation or zoom button zoom animation? You can't. That's it. You can't because it's a CSS hack. It's a wonderful, wonderful marvelous hack but you will not be able to fetch it, no matter if you do request animation frame. I mean, I, let's do a request animation frame just for the sake of it so you can see it. Um, and I know this is confusing. That's why I'm doing this thing. Uh, let me do a zoom start. Um, I want to set a, another flag on, oh, uh, you know what? I can do it with this flag. Yes, I can do it with this flag. I, can, I will be setting a set interval with a 200 millisecond. I can do 100 millisecond of a anonymous we're function. Running, we're running out of time. Perhaps you would like to give some time for questions, maybe? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Let's try and, yeah, please, if you have questions, ask them in the chat or in the Yes, where we can follow you. Uh, I, I'm seeing that question. So uh, I'm going to just uh, if you go to my web page at the bottom are all my contact details, including social media things. Yeah. So yeah, on tra oh yes, the on transition end. Oh yes, you're so right. I wish there was an on transition end as well. Cross browser. 
yeah perhaps i uh, i would like to to say that this is has been just insane amazing <laughs> and exciting so i i think uh, perhaps uh, even you would like to maybe summarize or give us some space because we are just five minutes and perhaps in two minutes uh, just um, to conclude our uh, live coding session uh, I don't really have any much more to add. Uh, just uh, if you want to do this kind of thing, go to the MDN, and read about the um, web audio API. Uh, somebody is asking for if you have a Twitch channel. I don't have a Twitch channel. I should, maybe, but <laughs> I don't have Joe. I know you make generative music, so kudos to you. I don't have one. <laughs> Someone I should listen to, to your work, but no, I don't. And on that part, I'm also a very big um, free and liberal open source software advocate. So I'm not very comfortable with a platform like Twitch. I wish something more, you know, free software open friendly uh, would exist. But that's just me. But yeah, please do read the Web Audio API and uh, do read the Leaflet documentation. And you should be on your way and you know it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to just try things and it's fun to just do things with web browsers with web browsers yep great yeah this um, is going to be just the the answer to no uh, we cannot fetch the zoom level during an anim animation uh, and if this works i'm just going to stop talking because it's uh, yeah, it, it. Oh God! Again, my head. Ah, fuck. Um, we will have more of uh, Ivan uh, later. So for now, I want to say thank you to all the audience. Thank you, Ivan.